Bag fuel, baby. What is Clue doing now, man? I'm on the radio with him tonight. Yeah, we, we thumbs up, man. I'm on the radio he, got, he got a radio show? Yeah, yeah. For, for 14 years now. Man, I I'm Power 105. Yeah, bro, I be, I be so out the loop, bro. I'm I'm a non-social kind of nigga, man. So, <laughs> you know, everything is always exciting to me. I'm hearing it for the first time, all the time. <laughs> non-social. How, how does an artist survive being non-social in today's climate when they want you to be social? I, I be getting bagged on by my staff. They be like, bro, like, you got to get out more. You got to. But I did it. And I didn't even like it when I was doing it, when I was first getting on, man. Mm. I just don't like being in front of people's faces like that. I like it. If I meet you, I think you a cool girl or a cool guy or whatever, man. You know, that was organic. Mm -hmm. You know, that was meant to be. It's like I'm forcing it. I pull up at the club talking about, hey, play my record. And, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. when you had to do that to get on, I always tell people, like, mm. I wouldn't want to be a new artist because it's hard. People yeah. be looking at you crazy. Yeah, absolutely. You're the same person that when you blow up, then when they first met you, the same talent, the same music. But for some reason, they just be looking at you real crazy when you starting out as if they mm -hmm. never started out. I would never want to do that. But with this, I think this is different. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming from the, from the side of when I first started, I told them, you know, I said, hi, you know people don't like to sit down and talk to niggas. Especially when they singers and all that. It's too much to risk. They don't really fuck with that. But this, you can kind of control this a little bit better life than when you just going on to the radio because they get a chance to really, like, talk to you and see you and you can control what you say. Like, with us, we don't do clickbait. So we just really have conversation about music business, life, what you got going on right now, how you want to build, trying to make you feel comfortable with telling your story you know what i'm saying or or at least what you got going on right now good news good news <laughs> I, I don't really be doing this part like this, again like you know it's promo i'm getting back out here man but mm -hmm. it's like you know this ain't really my thing what else would you do to promo then yeah. tell me that tell me that if, if, if you ain't gonna fuck with this, i think he would just want to drop you music don't and do, let it work and you don't want to do really, the, you know, yeah but how but, but how's that gonna work Tell me. It's not going to work. <laughs> That's the point. That's what I'm That's saying. That's why I'm here, goddamn. I'm like, yo, because, you know, and, and, and this is probably good for new artists to hear that it doesn't matter how good your product is. It don't matter how well received that it could be mm -hmm. unless it is received. It's never going to be none of that. The only way that they're going to receive it is to know that it's out here. Mm -hmm. So promotion yeah. is going to cost you money gonna cost you time it's gonna cost you other things besides just your creativity when did you realize that shit just recently i'm like why these songs ain't working <laughs> wow but then you know again, that's real people was telling me like life can i be honest with you i don't know why everybody think i'm so hard to approach i'm really you got that demeanor Yo, not, life no, no. <laughs> the word is out about that i'm not yeah, okay yeah. the yeah. Word is you out got the demeanor like, and it's not easy to work with he don't want to come and do this shit it's like Man. even like, like 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 for us it's not personal for us because i come from the creative side so i already right. told him i'm like clue don't never do interviews that's how me and him met it yeah. took me 9 months to get clue on his show 9 months you know what I'm saying? So I said, I understand that side of it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But on but on, 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 on the flip side of it, I always tell the people, like, yo, we gotta you, you gotta make money. I hate taking pictures. Mm -hmm. I, I I I make content, I don't watch none of my content. The only content that I watch of myself is if I drop a clip on the gram. So I'm I'm kind of like you in, in in that same type of way. Like if they if they get me to come on camera, they gotta pay me to come on camera. If not, I'm not really fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work to not come outside life. And and I uh, yeah, and I feel like that that's the difference with me too. Like I really don't got to be seen. I'm really not like I'm not really like I, into I, it like I'm that. just trying to understand you're a tall light skinned dude who can sing. <laughs> light skinned dude. Right? Yes. See, this round come out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like I would think you would use all these superpowers, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. <there>. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen. You say I would have thought you was a superpower. You use your super. Use all your superpowers, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> you you Imagine famous. That. You you were in the industry when it's hard. When it was hard to get into the industry, you have yeah. everything going for you. And I get not wanting to be around people, but then you know when you got leverage, sometimes you just want to turn the key a little bit. Sound like you be chilling. I don't, man. Like mm. you know, I, I really like. I don't know. I like being around my kids at home. That's dope. And I get up in the morning. And I do my cardio. Mm. I only eat one time a day. Same. We, like, that's the same thing we do. You know, so yeah. I, I later on I go work out. I work on my little business models, making sure you know these kids got something when, mm-hmm. when, when the nigga dead and gone. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm cool with that, man. You know, but I, but I, but I started mm. reaching back out to do stuff like this because. It's it's selfish, like you know. I got something to say, and I think that people receive it well in the way that I put it. And so, for me, not to want to do the extra work is almost like telling the universe, "Yeah, all right, you gave me this, and I'm a half-ass." Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I feel like that that's the work. Everybody, all, all, all the creators be on some like, yo, I'm going to go make the music and all that. And they get mad at me. Like, I'll be like, that's the simplest part for you to do because that's what you love. Mm. Right. The hardest part is when it's time that you're not getting a chance to make the creative music, but you got to go on the road for 30 and 45 days. Right. That's the hard part. For and real. you got to impress the people. You're like, why do I got to impress niggas? Because we need them to play your record. We need you to be fake friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I that's, think that, that's, that's probably it with me. Like, mm-hmm. all that. Like, I'm one of them niggas, like, you tell a joke, if it ain't funny, I don't care who you is. I ain't laughing. laughing. <laughs> I ain't laughing at this shit. <laughs> like, just, I mean, that's just yeah. me. And then I be the odd one. Everybody else cracking up. And I'm like, I don't get that shit. Shit not funny. Right. It's not funny. Think- I, yeah, Jay-Z, yeah, I know who you are, but that shit not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like- so, so if, 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 if you don't like being around people, how the hell did you get to reality TV, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm gonna tell you a real story, bro. Yeah, I, I have the so same shit. Like, I don't, I don't really. Well, let me let me change that. It ain't that I don't like being around people. It's just that I like being around people for purpose. Gotcha. I don't, I don't want to just be, wasting time. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be having the bullshit ass conversations about you know what new guns you got and and <laughs> and and your baby mama did that. Like, I don't want to have them conversations. I want to be progressive. But anyway, um, with the love and hip hop thing, you know, Miss Kylie Red, um, she, I mm-hmm. had an album coming out, mm-hmm. and I was dealing with her even before that, mm-hmm. and she was like, "Yo, you got to come on the show." I think she baited me. I think she all along wanted me to come on the show. Period. Oh, yeah. Because she asked me, I told her no a whole bunch of time. I'm like, I'm just not really on that. So she like, "Yo, you got an album coming out, don't you?" Ding, got him. Ding, ding. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. She like, look, I promise you I'll get you on the show. You're going to be able to promote your album, this, that, and the third. Mm. And that's just how that thing took place. Man. And it, just, it just spiraled down after that. Man. Like, <laughs> but, that, but that told me another lesson. Like, bro, mm. like when you try to do shit for the wrong reasons, mm. man, it don't never work out right. I mean, you... you is re- can reality television be the right reason? Because especially with that business model of love and hip hop, it's very rare people get to promote the album without a level of sacrifice on that platform. Yeah, and I really thought another, I don't know if I just told myself this just to you know make it more doable, but I really was like, it's nothing positive on love and hip hop. Okay. Thinking like if I get on this joint, I'ma be positive. I can bring the breath of fresh air, but, but I wasn't hip to the editing game. Uh, yeah, editing is ill. <laughs> that, that, that's crazy. Bro. I don't care how positive they can make you look dumb on that thing with you, editing. You, man. you regret doing it? Um, I don't regret nothing I did because it's learned experiences. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't. You know, they called me for the next season. I was like, nah, I'm good. Was the check all right? I'm not, I don't see you as a money chaser, but... Yeah, the check was popping. All right, cool, then. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of, I ain't going to even lie to you. Like it it kind of made it worse. Like, oh. Because when you get the check, it brings back all the memories of the shit that you did on this show and how mm. you looked and, and what you really promoted to people. It's like, God damn, this damn near blood money. 
Got you. I still deposited the check though. But... <laughs> As you should. <laughs> That's that motherfucker. I'm spending that light, motherfucker. Nonetheless, man, yeah. you know. I mean, how did you get into the industry for a dude that seemed like he don't want to deal with the nonsense then? You know, I was telling dude this the other day. It wasn't even really my goal to get into the music industry. When I manifested this thing, I manifested being able to touch people that was in like situations that I was in. Mm -hmm. That's all I manifested. I never manifested money or fame or none of that stuff. When I wrote and I was manifesting, I just manifested each song being able to touch somebody that was in that and it just came with it. Were you signed when you first dropped, or were you in independent? I was independent when I, I That's what I thought. Mm. Yeah. So where, if I can ask this, where did you get the team or the money from to push your record in that in that, in that that way? When I dropped, I just, <clears throat> I was out with my little cousins on the block selling these joints. Like, they cost a dollar to make, so I was selling them. Sometimes just for a dollar, just so I could re up, because I thought it was more important that cats had the music to mm. be making some money off. Promotion, so you understand yeah. promotion and marketing. Right, but never more than two dollars. Like I might need a yeah. dollar to get a water or something. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, you know, because I was living in Brooklyn at that time. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you from? I'm from Toledo, Ohio. Nah, I thought you were from yeah. Ohio. Right, but okay. when I came on from the joint, I came straight to Brooklyn. My oldest boy was born. We got a lot of Ohio people that have been passing yeah, through here. A lately. lot. A lot of Ohio. A lot of Ohio. We, we we getting a lot of love love out there too. That's why I asked you if you're from if you Does Ohio get from. the music credit it deserves, man? Um you know what? I don't know, man. Like I, I'm not really like entrenched. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, I say no. I'm gonna say no. Every time we're like Ohio, Toledo, Columbus, Bow Wow's from Ohio, uh, mm -hmm. so many other people, sports figures. It's not even looked at Life as Life Bone Thug. Yes. You got Donna, you got Piggy, you got influencers from there, you got yeah. female rappers that's coming up from there. You got I guess so we don't really yell Ohio. Is like, the Leverts you know, from there? Is Joe Levert and them from there? Cleveland. Ohio. We're taking the whole state. I'm just saying the whole yeah. state. It's, a, it's mad music people yeah. from there. Shout, shout to Linda Brooks. Shout to Jimmy Nichols. That, um, from the record exec. Yeah. From Ohio. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Ohio players. Shirley Murdoch. Oh, see? I didn't know Shirley Murdoch was from there. Yeah, man. Yeah. But I think we just don't yell Ohio. That's probably why. Weird. Um, mm. It works for Bone Thugs. Everybody know Bone Thugs is from there. I don't think nobody from Ohio really want to be from Ohio. I heard oh, they kind of like, said that. Really? You know, people don't really talk about Ohio is a violent place. Bro. That's what Piggy was just talking about. Yeah. Youngstown, I, I got family from right. there. Youngstown, Yo, that was a murder capital. That, that's what they say, the Bloods and the Crips run the town. Yo. And it's so crazy, bro. If you see you say Bloods and Crips, I can trace. it In, in Ohio, it was no Bloods. And no Crips, never, nowhere down there, bro, until Colors came up. Word, the movie and, with and, Sean Penn And what's so them. crazy is I remember being in Toledo, Ohio, and the government was trying to stop that movie from coming to Toledo because they was like, yo, we have no gang violence, and if this movie comes, it's going to bring gang violence. Really? And they was like, oh, they just trying to stop a black production and blah, blah, blah. And they brought that movie down there. I'm talking about coming out the movie theater. You got Amazing. Crips and Bloods fight. Right, never seen before. Sure. Right out the movie theater, bro. It's interesting because people always talk about music and movies don't really have that level of influence. And to they see influence. that, yeah. What's the, what's the vibe out there with, with just making the music, with the soul, with yeah. when you was making your, your records, like... What was the vibe of what you was putting into the records? Because if it's so bad out there, where was your positivity coming from mm. in that environment? I mean, like I told you, I don't really deal with niggas like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause we, it's the same entity. That's why. So we, yeah. it, it's real. You know. Yeah, that 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 that. Like when I got home from the joint, um, everybody wanted to put dope in my hand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And again, like I told you, I don't even really deal with niggas like that. And then the ones that I dealt with, you know, was niggas that was getting money. And they just wanted to put dope in my hand. They was trying to tell me every reason in the world to not to dope. pursue. Yeah, not to pursue this. And a, a funny story too. So when I first came home, right, my brother, like he was getting money out there, right? I stopped by his crib. I got this chick. 
she picked me up from the joint. Yeah. On my way to my mama house where I was staying. So I stopped by my brother's spot, you know, there and there, you know, again, like I'm just home, couple of my dudes in there. I tell her, like, yo, I'm just gonna chill right here. You know, mm-hmm. you just get head on. I'm chill. She get <clears throat> she get the wild and like, nah, you know, you just got home, you in there, you know what they doing there, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. So I tell them, look, I'm gonna just come back. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't even want to hear him. Cops ran down on them. Niggas. And they ran down. As soon as we <laughs> left, bro, I was up two blocks. Police ran in this thing. Dope all on the floor. Everybody in there went to prison. Everybody in the house went to prison, bro. I'd have been right back. That fast? That fast, man. Well, yes. Go on. You, you, what you. was the adjustment like getting out? And how long did it take you from getting out to being a world-renowned music artist? Uh, the, the adjustment was was weird because when I left, every car was boxed. So when I came home, aerodynamic cars now. <laughs> and How long was you down? I was down that time eleven years. Damn, you did eleven in the yeah, big like the first joint. Uh, and and it seemed like shit was moving so fast when I came. I was scared across the street. I'd be standing in the corner, seemed like them damn cars is moving fast as hell. I'm waiting, mm-hmm. lights turning red and green, and mm-hmm. like you. Double Dutch and trying to get across the street. You're the fifth person I've heard say that about cars. Yeah. All the mobsters said when they get out, the cars is the first thing that really pops out to them. That's interesting. All the like real live dudes that don't talk about their crimes, the first thing they say is the cars. So you a nigga that don't really fuck with nobody. Mm-hmm. Got 11 years, you got 11 years locked up, you was fucking with niggas. Then you was in the street when you was fucking with niggas. You talking about before I went? Before you yeah. went. But I was a youngin' because I went at 14. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I didn't so, know that, okay. So even though I was out here and I, I, I dealt with a couple niggas, it was, it was it was on some kid shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like you deal with them going skating into clubs, mm-hmm. you know, then the, the old heads give you pistols. And so even your relationship with the old heads ain't like a, a friendly relationship. It's mm-hmm. more of a like little nigga go, I got some work for you. Yeah. you know what I'm it's a working relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. like that's your boss. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Uh-huh. Definitely. Looking at it, do you think it was predatory or that's just the way of life? Definitely predatory, but shit. Oh, to me, that's why I stay in the house. Life is predatory. That's how I feel too. That's it a is. quote right there. With women, Nick, we're not about to say niggas want the pussy. They predatory. Women want the money. They predatory. They predatory. <laughs> Boss. Yo, I heard a thing called um phantom jobs, right? Phantom jobs. So they have um people that create digital jobs. So let's say you getting paid fifteen dollars an hour. So they'll create a job and saying we're hiring at twenty two dollars an hour. That's the incentive now. For people to say, I don't want to get fired to make them work harder without having to pay them. So they'll never hire the person for the job. What? I don't understand. Okay, man. look, if you when you get to it, you never he never had a job. So people working at <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> listen to, did you catch it? Did you catch what he said? All right, listen to what I'm saying. You work in a job, right? I'm being fifteen dollars an hour. Yeah, but your output instead of doing a hundred burgers is seventy burgers, right? So we're saying now we're gonna hire somebody to put out a hundred and fifty burgers, but we're gonna hire them at twenty two dollars an hour. Okay. But so now you don't want to lose your job. You start trying to match the output. Got you. I got you. Phantom jobs. Yeah, but the job they'll never. So that way they don't ever planning on filling a job. job. They just want you to work more and not pay they, you more. They're threatening you on, on the low yep. key. Uh, so what, that's what the predatory. It's universal, man. It's, it's, it's just in everything, man. You what, know. Yeah. So when you coming back out with your music right now, mm-hmm. what? Like what incentivizes you to come back out in this yeah. climate? Yeah. Um, it's so much going on in the world, man. Um, and I was talking to my kids, mm-hmm. and you know they always be asking me because I do so much for everybody, man. And they always be asking me like, "What do you want?" You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Is it something that you want? And I just was like, man, I would really want. Y'all to experience what the world was like before. All that. Mm. You know, back when house party, yep. the worst thing that was going to happen to you, you're going to get your ass whooped. You're going to fight. And you might win the next time, the next week you go mm-hmm. back to the same house party. 
you know, the parks, the, you know, we had shut down the whole street and turned on the fire hydrant, barbecue grills down the whole mm-hmm. street, no mm-hmm. permit, just, you know, family. Um, and I, when I thought about must be nice, I was like, this is a, a throwback to that moment. At least, at least something from that moment is still able to be experienced. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And with everything that's going on today, it would, it would, it would be very, very understandable for somebody to say that this world ain't shit. Everything in it is predatory, mm-hmm. just like we was talking about. So I just wanted to throw a little sunlight in there, man. So what's the, what's the businesses that you be working on? Because you said that you home working on your businesses, that you want to leave yeah. leave stuff behind. Because I tell people it's important that you take your music money and do something with it. Yeah. I didn't do that life, and I wound up filing for bankruptcy and fighting my way back because a nigga like me was scared to invest. Mm. I was scared to put my my mm. my nickels and pennies somewhere, and I was only taught to save money. That's why my father taught me to do like, yo, you got some money, save it, save it, save it. What you think about that shit? Yeah, first I want to say it's even a blessing to get to that point. Mm. I, I always mm. tell people it's, it's 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 three steps with some money. First, you want to just put it in the mattress. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to fill it in your hand. Yeah. Then secondly, you put it in the bank. Right. But you don't want to invest it. You just want to go to your bank account. And look, look at that, that number. Like, I'm popping. Yeah. And then the third one <laughs> is having money that you can't see, but you know it's working for you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing to get to that. Yeah. Um, but as far as the first question with the businesses, like I got I got a lot of cool shit going on, like I got this brand of clothing okay. that I really just dropped. It's called uh, Repetition. And it's an elephant with a um, string tied around his leg to a post. Because I, I, I was watching this documentary and I saw how elephants, when they're young, they take a chain and they chain the leg of an elephant to a post so the elephant can't get away. And as the elephant grows, it keeps on trying to get away, keeps on trying to get away, never gets away. So when the elephant is grown, they take the chain off of the elephant's leg and they just put a little thin string on it and tie it to a post. The elephant never tries to get away ever again. Because he's already trained. Because it's already trained and not get away. And I thought like, okay, how, I just looked at that like how many things in your life was relevant for you not getting away when you was young? You know, such as my mama did this, my daddy did that, I come from a broken home. This, You know this story, man. Mm-hmm. But now you in the dope. You can get away from that shit, but you don't even try no more. You stuck in that, you, you stuck, stuck in the in past, that. PTSD. Right. So through repetition, man, repetition, telling yourself over and over again, being around positive people who are telling you this same thing, then you can just goddamn, look at this little ass string on my leg and you can break away. Mm-hmm. And that's what the clothing line is, man. And we always got like a question mark on the inside of the sleeve because we want you to be able to look at it and be like, yo, what in my life is still holding me back that mm-hmm. no longer have to hold me back? And that's what that's what I call intellectual fashion, man. Because mm-hmm. you can look good and not feel good. That's you know? true. That's one of them. Um, I got a children book series that I wrote because um, kids aren't reading anymore. Um, so it's a three book series and I'm going to add a book to that. Is every it self-published? Year. Yeah, self published. I didn't. I didn't want. It. I mean, I'm getting calls about it, obviously, but you know, I just, I just want to do some shit for myself. I want my kids to be looking at me like, you know, pops did this for itself. If it take off and then they grab it, then that's cool. But for right now, this is something that we did ourselves, man. Um, what else? Uh, what else we got? A O U. So that must be nice. I own my master to that now. That's why I redid it. And I created a brand called AOU, which is Artist Own Umbrella. And it'll be other artists coming out the same way. When you see that stamp AOU, that means that that money, when you stream that joint, that money ain't going to the label. That's what I'm saying to you. Straight to the artist. You dig what I'm saying? So all these artists that's suffering out here, come make you an AOU version of your record, and mm. all of that master money is going. You know about the master. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know all about the master game. Yeah. What, what, what I'm trying to figure out is this. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. Why you think all the labels is buying all of these masters? I feel like they got a plan, and why is everybody selling all this shit if they see them buying everybody? The is, is nobody thinking about why they buying everybody's publishing and masters? I am. What's I that? am. The same reason why they buying all these houses. You notice that too. Yes. These, yeah. these little residential houses, these companies is buying them up because that's where the real money at, intellectual property. And IP. 
Right, physical product. Like, look, all these movies and all this stuff, you know, that's big money when they license songs to come. It's mm-hmm. going to be one company that's going to corner the market that's going to own all most of shit. the masters and the movie company. So now- A real-time monopoly. When, right. Now when they do movies, anybody that's not in the pot to get picked from, then they not using them. They won't use the ones. But don't they, they kind of do that now? So you talking about on a grander scale because they do that through the publishing company, Sony, Sony Publishing. They get with the movie motherfuckers. We want to put our music in there only. It's all Sony artists. We want to break other artists. You know, let Nas with Nas is on Sony. Let yo let Nas. But do But guess what? Universal that. can but, do but that. Isn't that the same type of thing? But they're just gonna. It's just gonna be one. You're saying. Yeah, Good thinking. obviously it's probably not just going to be one. It's going to be probably two or three. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the other part of that is, you know, I try to look at everything with 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 a, with a real estate um, position. It's like if I buy a house, I know that no matter what I pay, I want to make at least 2% per month off of this house. That tells me it's a good deal off mm-hmm. the rip. Anything mm-hmm. under that, I'm not even looking at it. Mm-hmm. So now if you look at... um copyright game if i own a, a song whatever i pay for it do you know how much it is it's probably like 20 30 percent per month that i'm getting off of what i pay Negative. for the song mm-hmm. and it's stable these staple songs are gonna live forever so really you selling you selling real estate that you could make money off of forever Ever. Just for payday day. Then they tell you shit like, all right, well, because they really do it in multiples, right? So they'll give you, let's say you make a thousand dollars a year off a record. They say, well, we'll give you a 15 times multiple. They give you $15,000. 15, mm-hmm. And then they go in and they push the button. And make the record make more money. <laughs> and make more money. I know that, that, that's mm-hmm. the whole thing because they, cause they're buying the record from you because they know they can place the record and make money. Well, once they gave you that $15,000, that's let's, just let's, a portion of what they're already going to get paid. No, no, let's spin it back. Let's, I, can, I quote what y'all just said. We got to slow this down. An artist sells their catalog because the record's moving slow. That was one of the issues all the artists had when Diddy gave back their publishing. They're like, it ain't moving. Mm-hmm. So they're like, let me take the cash advance because it ain't moving. Mm-hmm. Now we're like, we sunk your record. Now we're going to diesel fuel it back but up. See, that's the game. Yo. they sink your record before they make you an offer. Yeah, they got to. Right. They'll because if they your don't, record. you're gonna you're gonna be like, why am I gonna do this? I'm 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 reaping royalty, even if it's not a lot of royalty. If I'm getting thirty thousand, fifteen thousand off my royalty, why am I gonna sell it? I'm a, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna rock out with this for the rest of my but, life with my other records that I have as, as well. Because when we first started speaking, and he told me the way labels stop an artist is to slow down their funding, their budget, because and you, power. Yeah, the power because. Y'all come from the time when videos was a million dollars, everything right. was coming in, right. and they're like, now we slow down that record, that money ain't the same. I'm, he's the first person to ever I, tell no, me that. I know, I'm going to make you owe me now. Yeah. So now life is going to owe me, straight up and down. I'm not going to Predatory. Put, listen, this is simple. I got a demand for life records for half a million. I'm only pressing 200,000. You lost the he record. He already don't even know he finished. He finished. I'm finishing him right now. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna sell the record. You're not, and then I'm gonna let him shoot a video because I'm gonna get a kickback. Mm-hmm. That's gonna go. It's gonna put him more in the red. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just dun him off, and I'm gonna finish him all the way down to the final compound. Now, now when life gets to shit, he already pissed, and he like, I owe y'all niggas three million dollars. The fuck is you talking about? When I got the hottest record going out, how am I only selling two hundred thousand? How many spins is that? Uh, 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 Nigga, a I'm month. gonna control the spins too. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely gonna control. Uh, I'm gonna control the spins too. What are you talking about? See, this is what niggas don't know. I can control the spins. That's why niggas are, 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 are rap or singer. The number one thing y'all gotta do, y'all gotta get a friend and an ally within the building that's gonna tell you your life. Listen, this is what they doing. You gotta get a discretionary fund so life can say, "Oh, they trying to out, out me." I right, yo, let's Marshall go get this money. Let me add two things. Okay, okay. Go ahead. let's go, life. Not only do you gotta have a friend in the building that to tell you what your situation is mm-hmm. gonna be you gotta accept that situation mm. because niggas will tell you the real this is how long they want you around for this is the purpose they want you, you around mad. for and you mad you think yeah. that you could you could somehow finagle out of this position no you gotta look at the position and figure out how you could pivot into something else when the position is up 
Mm. And then also, mm. number two, you know, this is, I don't, again, I said I don't really have regrets, but if I could do some extra stuff differently, you can't be scared to spend your own money on yourself. I tell these niggas this. Drop, drop yo, the mic. Bro, I tell drop these the niggas mic. this. Man. Yo, bro, we spend our own money. Got to. We are independent podcast is ranked up with all the rest of them but like i tell niggas i say yo the, the difference between us and them is they got more money because they got a machine and we have to spend our money actively mm -hmm. on and spend it on the right things yeah but it, make, but it makes sense to mm -hmm. spend your own money um like a situation i don't really be telling my business but i'm gonna tell you a situation just in case somebody is listening so i had a deal with sony in the beginning so my deal with sony said of course you probably know this that whatever they spend on the video, they're allowed to recoup half of it. Mm -hmm. Not the whole video, they're That's allowed so. to recoup half of it, but they also, <laughs> this is crazy, <laughs> they also still own the video mm -hmm. forever. Like they own 100% of the video. Mm -hmm. Money's made all the video. So what's going on with me right now is that Sony, um, they recouped 100% of the video right instead of half the video but since this is another thing too because they only give you a three-year window to audit them mm -hmm. so they know you ain't gonna audit them in the beginning that's when all the dirt go on in the first three years that's when they kill you and then, <laughs> <laughs> so then when you finally realize 15 years later when you might be having a couple money problems and somebody put in your ear yo they wasn't supposed to do this and they owe mm -hmm. you because sony really owe me like about 15 million dollars bro you know my my first record um 15 m's nigga and look why with my, no wonder my you want to be around niggas my, my, my account <laughs> did the math with the stuff because sony um, I had a um, I had a clause in my contract that said that um, they couldn't um, what is it called cross collateralize. Okay, which means that if your third album tank, but your first two albums was love, they can recoup the tanking from your third album from your first two. So I didn't have that in my contract, but when I looked, they had cross collateralized. Everything. I, I still owe them a million dollars from my first album, which is like three times platinum. I still owe them a million dollars. And the reason why is because I never I never um hit them in three years. I never hit them in three years. So now they'll be like, Yeah, we made some calculation errors, but you didn't catch it in the three years. So we don't owe you nothing. Listen, I don't hurt from I this guy. Hurt, look, I heard uh, you can still do a forensic audit no, after three years. You can't. I, let, let me tell you why. Uh, let me tell me. you why. And I did all of this. You did right? the forensic too. But I like I this business talk. I was man. gonna do a forensic. I didn't um, keep on going with it because the guy actually told me to finish the whole accounting thing. Like I'm be paying a million dollars to get it done. Like he was like, "It's money there." Do you want to risk that million on something that may not work? But the reason why I didn't do it is because look how these cats play. And I respect it. When we put in to get all the paperwork, no bullshit. We got a FedEx truck with probably like 40 boxes in it, bro. How you going to find Yep, it? that's that's the, that's number one. <laughs> they they flood you with the boxes. They flood you with the boxes. And then the lawyer's going to charge you to look through all of that. And if they owe me $15 million, it makes financial sense that they can spend $5 million just making this shit go on 80 years. But for me, I only got a certain budget that mm -hmm. I yep. spend Yep, they said unlimited. Whew. So I took out I, what I said in the beginning. I just accepted it because it is what it is. I don't got the money to fight them. Be more careful next time. Currently. You know? How does music make you feel when you're creating it? But see, that's why I do it. Just despite the cat out here mm -hmm. to owe you 15 million or whatever, like, I love what I do, bro. Like, I really... We can like, hear it in your music, man. Bro, I get the same feeling. Like, it's no other feeling that I get. I ain't talking about, like, a song going number one or none of that shit. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about creating, like you're saying. Bro, I'm talking about... I'm in there and wrote it, and I hear it, and I say, oh, this shit is it. Like, I'm getting goosebumps right now even mm -hmm. just talking about that process, mm -hmm. man. So they got, they got 15 million, right? 
But I got some shit that's going to give me a feeling that that 15 million ain't going to come close to giving you. So who won? Shit, if I got the 15 man, I think I won. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I think I, hey, guess, that shit gonna make me feel gooder than the motherfucker. Well, guess what? I'm still all right, though. Yeah, no doubt. No, I can tell by your bezel, man. The fuck <laughs> are you talking about? And he's you know, calm. I, I, I ain't hurting for it. And sometimes I be wondering, do I even want, I don't even know if I want that much money like I, that, bro. I don't even. I don't. Even, I don't think so. I think. I, I think. Mm. It, and, and I'm saying this from not the standpoint of having that money, y'all, but for having a couple dollars and buying things that you always thought that you wanted. I don't even like like driving my car no more. Mm. If I could live in New York and not ha have a car, I would. And when I was younger, all I wanted was nice cars, clothes. I get you get the clothes for free now. The bad bitch. The bad bitch. You yeah. get the bad bitches everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like you for you, him. It would just be Uber to nice restaurants. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah, that's it. I'm but, a, see, but, see, but, we we talking, but I'ma not be around a lot of niggas too. Yeah. I'm around them by default because I have to be because right. I'm launching a whole new career here, and I was a manager prior. So you would have you you didn't have to come. If I managed you, your life, you stay where the fuck you at, enjoy your shit. I'm going to go deal with these niggas. I'm going to let you know when the money comes. Mm -hmm. You right. come down, you do your 30-minute nigga, you go home. Right. I got everything here. That's the type of manager that I was. You know what I'm saying? So I always was mixy with niggas because I had to be. You know that's what I'm saying? Growth, man. But now I'm telling him, I'm like, I got another channel. I got a sports show. Yeah. I said, my nigga, I want to film, so I don't got to come outside. I heard Joe Button say this. And it was an epiphany to me. Like, he was like, they was like, Joe, why why we don't never see you? And why you don't host stuff? He said, because I don't have to. So I'm, I'm rich. Yeah. I don't got to come outside. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I called Heineken. I said, we ain't got that money. That's why we still uh, be outside. Yep. I got a host. <laughs> I got I got, I got to throw events. All these niggas outside. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. I, got, yeah. I got to throw events and shit. And I, I got an event next week. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. dope and all. It's dope. But I would rather just make my money. Yo, life, yo, we going to, yo, we put this life shit up. We done made 8000 off our life interview. Yeah. I'm making 40000 on my interview. I, I would rather that be the case. And yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this. I know you a get money dude because every get money dude has one thing in common. They're always ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. Like 50 on time. Even when we first had our first business meeting, I didn't know he was an on time dude. Uh, 50. Yeah. That boy an animal, man. <laughs> that boy yeah. an animal. Like I, like, I don't mean to cut you off. No, go I, for I, it. I just, in Shreveport, 50 had this thing down there. Yeah. And I, I'm launching this other company on the side called Yadeno. Um, and I went down there to chop it with 50 about Yadeno. Yeah. But when I get down there, bro, <laughs> he, he, you all know the thing he just did in Shreveport, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very aware. I, yeah. I'm driving down the street. Every street that I see, they got 50 cent billboards all out their house and Towels on the window. I get to the spot. This man is running out the whole town. He got the whole police. <laughs> he ran out the whole town. Well, I'm, bro, I'm not bullshitting. That sounds like a joke, bro. Nah, nah everybody talked about town. it. Everybody talked about it. I was it. there, bro. I'm talking about every night is something different. Everything is crazy. Bro, I was supposed to stay. <laughs> no bullshit. So <laughs> I chopped it with 50. I performed out there with Murder, Yayo, and 50 mm -hmm. and all them. And I went to the party that night. I was just amazed by this shit the whole day. And when I went to the party and I just saw what this dude was putting down, mm -hmm. I left. I left the party, jumped on the plane, and came home, and the whole time just planning. And what I do when I got to the crib? She, on, she, she eating her cheeses. Bro, got me a little club. My club is getting renovated right oh, now. Oh shit, nigga! I, he just motivated me, bro. Like I went home, mm -hmm. I, all that shit I was talking about doing my children book series. I said, look, this shit ain't sitting no more. This shit is about to come out right here. Mm -hmm. Bought a whole bunch of video equipment, so now I got a multimedia room. Writing my first movie, I'm about to start mm -hmm. shooting my first movie in a month because I got too much going. That on nigga this has month. you fucked up in Shreveport, bro. You saw money. You saw dollar signs everywhere I out there, motherfucker. Money. I saw somebody that was not sitting on their fucking dreams, bro. Mm. I saw somebody Ooh. that was that was active in their life. Like most of us, everybody got dreams and all that shit, but are you active? That's fit. This nigga is active. 
<laughs> and I got activated. <laughs> All for him being active. I got activated. Them is the kind of niggas that I want when I come outside. Yeah. Them is the niggas I want to be around, man. He don't even know it. I ain't even hit him and tell him. I ain't listen to nothing else that nigga was talking about. He was like, yeah, life on my, hit me on this. I never even hit him. I never <laughs> I got, hit I got what I came to yeah. see. I got yeah. it. I'm good, bro. I'm a spy. I was on the plane that night. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, go on high. I see you about to We say. just seen um, the Pharrell movie where it's based on, they did it Lego style. And he had to create it Lego style because his name is, so everyone sees sounds official, and then one of the things um, Pharrell said he wanted the Lego movie so he could show how he sees sounds. How do you see music? First of all, Pharrell got a movie. Out? Yeah, it's and it's all Lego. It's a life story, and it's in Lego, and yeah. he got Buster doing the doing yeah. the Jay Z's um, in and Lego, and Jay Z talks in it. Mad people through his life is mm -hmm. talking. You got Missy talking. Gwen Stefani, in it. Timberland, and they Wait, all the Lego in theater. Game. Yes. Yeah, October we went to the 11th. theater. They, well, they, well, they showed it to us before it yeah. came out, but it's going to be in theater. It's, it's an dope. amazing movie. You can it's take wild. your kids to it. It's wild. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. And every piece he was showing where people were denying his beats, and it was like a Lego piece, and it was lighting up, and he put it in the shelf. He's like, this is how I see music. That's how I see music. This shit is fire. Bro. And based on how care. you talking, I'm like, I wonder how you see music. Is it a color? Is it an entity, a feeling? Um... It's probably more of a feeling more than mm -hmm. anything. Like when I hit the studio, I already know probably I'm going to really get nothing done in probably like the first two hours. Really? You one of those? Yeah. And it, I'm <laughs> you a, I'm you, you be vibing. Pushing, you yeah, vibing. Right. I'm going to be pushing all the button. But then it's like it's like that little radio. Like you know how you, mm, the yeah, station is going up, in yeah. and out. <laughs> and then after about two hours, I don't care. It could be four degrees in the room, I'm just going to start sweating. Mm. And then that's how I know I'm locked in now. And then I'm going to bang. How come you never really fuck with up-tempos like that? Because I don't know how to dance. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Because if, you, if you're doing an up-tempo, you got to be dancing to the shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a real man. <laughs> you know that's a saying? real man answer. I I'm not you mad at you. You a supreme songwriter, so I always wanted to ask him, like, I know this nigga could do up-tempos up, up because he's a, he's a songwriter. Yeah, so right. you give him the up-tempo beat, he's going to write the melody, everything to it. That's good. But I was like, why this nigga never did no up-tempo? <laughs> I'm not no dancer, nigga. I'm yeah. not no dancer. I'm, I'm, I'm a part. Party, you put the booty yeah, on me. I'm yeah, riding yeah. all night. Shake the champagne in the, the bottle up. I'm screaming. The, I'm screaming the ill part. I'm not getting out there and shaking it down. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. I got again. Like I just say, I got. They got to be a feeling for me, and I'm not up you, like that. You too so. cool. I couldn't even see this nigga yeah. busting out. <laughs> you know I, mean? I can't even see this nigga busting out. Crazy. What, what, what's like, a, nah, I can't even. What's the artist you had a good vibe with in the studio? That it was just like. Yo, this is a movie right here. I'm um, an artist that I had a good vibe with. Like any collaborator. I don't like niggas. Yeah, you know. cause, hey, so crazy. <laughs> I'm trying to think, who was I in the studio oh, with? Like, who I collab with? Niggas that I don't like. They not tell you how to get, I don't like niggas. That's a fact. I be by myself, bro. He's like, yeah, send the Pro Tools over. I don't think I was in the studio with nobody. <laughs> I, think, I think they just sent their shit in. Yeah, I'm sending the Pro Tools. This nigga is wild. They going to call you Pro Tools Jennings? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my last question. With the climate, with age and everything that's going on, mm -hmm. do you ever think about what radio stations can play your record? Ooh. Uh, I try not to ever let it be yeah. a radio station thing. Like, if okay. you're writing for the radio, you're setting yourself up to lose already. Because that's interesting. the audience is so finicky. You, It's people that go viral online yeah. and never meant to go viral. Yeah. It'd be one of those. Try their whole life to go viral. Never get it, and it just never happened, man. So, um, I just really, I I try to write records that's gonna touch the person that it's meant to touch. Don't got nothing to do with radio. Don't got nothing to do with. What about money, dispose man. your life? I, and, and 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 you saying that you coming to do this now, right? Yeah, and yeah. I get it, right? And I'm gonna tell you. A lot of niggas, they not like us. You ain't going to be comfortable with niggas like you cousin with. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tell you right now because you're going to be like, yo, take me back to them niggas. Like, but that's a whole nother yeah. thing. That's a whole nother thing, right? Yeah. But, 
then I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Yeah, you are going to be mad. You're going to be I'm, mad. I'm, I'm, I'm going to prepare you in advance. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I, so I know that, you know, I'm just talking about it as a promotional vehicle. Yeah. So right. I'm just using radio. So, so they got playlists. You know what I'm saying? Or do you fuck with the dudes with the Spotify playlist? Um, That's a big uh, uh, machine. Uh, um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Then they got the they got the radio stations that are geared now to the veteran singer or the veteran rapper. Like we got one here. What is it? One hundred three point. I forgot what it is. The one that Cipher Sounds is yeah, on. Yeah, they don't play past two thousand and five. But no, mm -hmm. but if you're a but if you're an artist that's an older artist and you drop a new record, they, they gonna play, play your shit. Oh, play it's like AC, something like that. But it's for hip hop and R and R and B together. Yeah, you know oh, what I'm saying. Okay. And then okay. it's, it gets a lot of ratings, get, like a yeah, lot. They get, it's they high. Get so, but New York is the only station that I know offhand that has one of those. But ain't that sad though? Like if you put out a good record, shouldn't it just be a good record? But we just spoke 30 minutes ago about labels sinking artists. Yeah. And then now people be like, whatever happened to too the art? Much, yeah. Too much power. Yo, bro, yeah. if I keep letting you sell millions of records, you're going to have too much power, you, right? right? But yeah. if I let her sell 500, I let him sell 800. Yeah. I let them sell 1.1 million. None of y'all strong. Y'all need to come out for the second time to get strong, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to let you come out, but I made 5 million off of you. Mm -hmm. I made 8 million off of you. Yeah. I made 10 million or for you, maybe eleven million off of you. I don't need to let y'all niggas come and back think about out it. because then I gotta give you a bigger advance, mm -hmm. and you gonna be talking shit. Bigger, yeah. <laughs> and shit, a lot of times whoever got the worst deal is gonna do the best because I'm Yo, making the most. Future money. had the worst deal out of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Future had a fucking single deal. <laughs> All right, and and they push it out. And Future had to write give racks on racks to the Chris yeah, nigga. Yeah, he 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 you know gave saying? away a lot and look of at records. Him, it's mad niggas that got whack deals that really came up and said, "I just got a little deal because them little deal motherfuckers be trying to make money off of you." Mm -hmm. Them little yeah. deal motherfuckers, yeah. they they gotta get the back. They gotta push life. Like if I give life thirty thousand dollars and I'm in deal, I need you to sell records, life. Because but you know, that's that's what Trump said, and I and I and I really live by this right here. Trump said, and and before anybody gets to talk about yeah, life, yeah, voting for Trump. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> He's he just saying Trump he said something. Yeah, just, he said something that was important. Trump said, if I go borrow a million dollars from the bank and I have some company trouble, and I go to the bank and say, hey, I'm having trouble in my company, the bank is going to say, hey, that's a you problem. You got a million dollars. He say, but if I borrow $300 million from a bank, and I go to the bank like I'm having some company trouble. Then it's a us that's problem. problem because they not trying to lose that three million dollars. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of times, even with labels, I used to be like, I, ain't, I even on my second album, I never renegotiated. You know, once you go platinum, you, you can to renegotiate. Go back. You're supposed yeah. to renegotiate. I didn't because I was just like, I don't want to take their money like that, man. I want to bet on me. I want to blase, blase. But in reality, you should take as they much money. as you possibly you can. can because then it becomes a y'all problem, Dang. not Ooh, just a you problem. Ooh. That's, <laughs> I'm good. That's how you end the interview. Bad fuel. <laughs> life Jenna's drop jewels. Before we go, life, is there anything that you want to mention or promote before it's over? Um, I forget anything. You, you said you got a children's book. You... Mm. Oh yeah, you know I got the EP coming out later on this year. Mm. I started rapping, man. <laughs> Oh shit! shit you could have did an eight bar rapper. with us. We got a we got a platform where you couldn't get <laughs> eight bars with yeah. no beat. Nigga. I was just in the car. I was just in the car writing some shit like a hundred and ninety pounds with no chains on. <laughs> 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 So so your name gonna be Bars Jennings? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not for real. Like I was like 190 pounds with no chains on. Who? Your wife the same bitch we ran the train on. Ooh. Pussy bitter like Dame since Jay gone. Oh Nova came, Nova came to the pain gone. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Yo, back to follow life, Jennings. He's out. Yeah. Yo. Follow him now because he's outside right yeah, now. Right. He's what going back in inside soon. <laughs> yeah. He's going back inside. We all going out inside at the same <laughs> time. He's outside right now. Yeah. Bagfield, like, subscribe, super thanks. 
Call me for the consultations. Exactly. DM me. My consultations is lit. They going up. Cop my cookbook from bagfuel.com. Cop our yeah. merch from bagfuel.com. Yep. It's up. Life Jen is bagfuel. My partner Heineken is in full effect. Yeah. Bagfuel Brigade, $5. You would have seen this man on, on the show Long already. time ago. You losing mm -hmm. out. Cop, spend that $5. Bagfuel Brigade, we out. Mm -hmm.